So there's some speculation going on that the Russian armed forces are running out of ammunition or better a certain kind of ammunition. My first reaction when I heard this was, oh that sounds familiar and I responded with the classical ammunition crisis to a tweet by Jens Wiener that covered the subject. You might ask why I called it classical, well in both world wars and other conflicts since then there were various instances of ammunition shortages or scandals. So in this video we look at the current speculation about the ammunition problems within the Russian armed forces, additionally we look at prior instances as well, for more historical context. Be aware that the term ammunition and munition are used interchangeably in this video, generally by the quoted sources. Technically munitions account for both the ammo and the weapons, whereas ammunition only accounts for shells, projectiles, powder and fuses. So let us look at the various information that is available. As always, take this with a huge grain of salt. First off, Jens Wehner, who you might know from various of my videos, also understands Russian. As such, he followed the official Russian news about the conflict. He tweets also in English, make sure to follow him. Based on this, he did some summaries and tweets. One was a chart based on the data published by the Russian Ministry of Defense. The data is about Russian attacks against military objects or static positions. The term is rather vague and an umbrella term in the sense of legitimate target. In case you read Russian, the original is displayed on the screen, since some meaning might get lost in translation. Anyway, military objects likely refers to stationary military objects, not vehicles. The graph shows the number of daily attacks. They are short of 200 attacks per day on average. Important with this graph, the number on the right side is for daily attacks, so it is relevant for the blue bars and red line, while the number on the left side shows the cumulative attacks, so it's only relevant for the black line. Be aware that the attacks should not be confused with sorties, which are missions flown by aircraft. Based on these numbers, he assumes that there's a certain lack of ammunition, but he's clearly not the only person stating this. Already on 28th February 2022, so during the very early stages of the war, Justin Bronk published an article on Rusi that talked about the fact that the Russian air forces so far had been less active than many suspected. During combat operations over Syria, only the Su-34 fleet was regularly made use of PGMs, precision guided munitions, and even these specialist strike aircraft have regularly resorted to unguided bomb and rocket attacks. This not only indicates a very limited familiarity with PGMs among most Russian fighter crews, but also reinforces the widely accepted theory that the Russian air delivered PGM stockpile is very limited. Years of combat operations in Syria will have further depleted that stockpile, and may mean that the bulk of the 300 VKS fixed wing combat aircraft massed around Ukraine have only unguided bombs and rockets to draw on for ground attack sorties. Note, this was also discussed by him and Chris from Military Aviation History in a video from July 2021. Additionally, around 21st March 22, the Russian Ministry of Defense released a video which seems to show several Ukrainian multiple launch rocket systems being struck by a Russian ballistic missile. The Twitter account Open Source Intelligence Technical argues that this likely was a short range ballistic missile and he argues that this is due to the lack of precision guided munitions for aircraft. Of course other interpretations might be that the Russians didn't want to risk the aircraft and or due to the time critical nature or something else they might have used such a missile as an alternative approach. Another observation that supports the speculation that the Russian Air Force is running low on precision guided munitions is the fact that the various cases of low level attacks with unguided bombs usually called dump bombs. This has been reported on 9th March 2022 by both the Times of London and the Washington Post. Similarly, on 21st March 2022, an article on Defense One noted the following. Over the last several days, Pentagon officials say Russia has begun to rely more on dump bombs rather than precision-guided munitions, which they say might be occurring because Russia may be running low on precision-guided weapons. Russia has launched more than 1,100 missiles of all types into Ukraine since the invasion began. It is important to point out that the lack in precision guided munitions is nothing new or limited to the Russian forces. Namely, in 2011, during the military intervention in Libya, there was a shortage of ammunition among European forces that were involved. 
To quote the Washington Post article from April 2011, less than a month into the Libyan conflict, NATO is running short of precision bombs. Highlighting the limitations of Britain, France and other European countries in sustaining even a relatively small military action over an extended period of time, according to senior NATO and US officials. Thank you to Andrew for pointing this out. Now I also mentioned other conflicts as well where something similar happened. The first one that comes to mind for me is the First World War. Here none of the major powers had enough ammo stockpiled. Despite evidence of recent conflicts, all armies entered World War I with far too little artillery ammo. During the Russo-Japanese War, the Russian army averaged 87,000 rounds for each month of combat in 1904. By the First Balkan War in 1912, the Bulgarian army was shooting 254,000 rounds per month. Yet the French army started World War I with less than 5 million rounds in hand. The Russians were in a little bit better position with about 12 million rounds. The Germans seemed to have been in the best shape, with slightly more than 20 million rounds, but even that had to be split between two fronts. For more information on artillery combat and ammo consumption, check out my video here. Generally, the major powers at the beginning of the war expected a short war, yet to the war turning into static warfare, the ammunition consumption, particularly for artillery, increased tremendously. As such, the pre-war calculations for production were completely off. The planned French production of artillery shells of all calibers in the time of war was little over 7,000 per day, chiefly of 75mm shells. This was thought to be sufficient. By 1917, production had exceeded 260,000 shells per day, of which more than 220,000 were for the field artillery. The production and consumption of shells had multiplied by a factor of 40, of average compared to the initial forecast. Similarly, the British had the so-called shell crisis in 1915. So what are the similarities and clear difference to the Russian-Ukrainian war based on the information? A similarity seems to be that the Russian leadership expected a short war or maybe even just a weakly contested occupation like the annexation of Crimea by the Russian Federation in 2014. Or something in between, the Russian air assault on a hostile airport near Kiev on 24 February 2022, that was counterattacked by local Ukrainian forces, could indicate that this initial attack might have been intended to bring in special forces to take out the Ukrainian leadership. Anyway, the differences to the First World War are that the forces of the Russian Federation likely do not have a problem with regular ammunition, from what we know, but mainly with precision-guarded ammunition. Although there are some, particularly former US General Ben Hodges, that noted on the 14th of March 2022 that the Russian forces might in the next 10 days do not have the ammunition or manpower to keep up the offensive. I'm writing this on the 22nd of March 2022 and I think this statement might not be valid. Generally it seems that the Russian forces are underestimated for various reasons. One is that we constantly see Russian vehicles being destroyed and or even captured by Ukrainian forces. Yet it is without doubt that Ukrainian forces also have taken losses, but I haven't seen any videos on this. Which is a good indicator for the fact that Ukraine so far dominates the info war in the West. Another major difference is also the difference in manpower with this and past conflicts. Current estimates note that about 150 to 190,000 Russian troops are in Ukraine around early March 2022. To put this in perspective, in the initial stages of the First World War and the Battle of the Frontiers in August to September 1914, the Germans had about 68 divisions deployed. Such a division had an authorized strength of about 18,000 men, so we are speaking of around 1.2 million men in divisional manpower. So be aware that the number likely was higher since there were personnel outside of divisions as well, and keep in mind this was just the Western Front. The German losses alone were around 300,000 men in this period, so more than the Russian Federation likely has deployed in total. This is particularly important to keep in mind when making any comparisons to the World War, that the scope is vastly different. Now quite often people bring forward the quote that people don't learn from the past are doomed to repeat it. I personally really dislike this quote, especially since it usually is brought forward by people that have a limited understanding of history and at best make comparison based on analogies that are often heavily or even completely flawed. This does not mean that one can't learn from history, 
since they are general patterns that repeat themselves, but those patterns need to be identified by clear analysis and understanding, not by sufficient analogies that are based on some vague similarities. Generally, the large scale production of ammunition is a complicated issue even for relatively simple ammunition like artillery shells, but even more so for precision guided munitions. For this, let us look at another example, this time the Second World War. This is particularly interesting because it shows that just learning from history is easier said than done. For this we look at the German side. Ammunition production and the various problems are usually not discussed. I only touched very briefly on it myself in a video with Phil. Yet considering how many resources it required, it is not really well covered. Two notes, after aircraft production. Supplying the enormous volumes of ammunition demanded by modern warfare was by far the largest industrial challenge facing the German economy in World War II. So what went wrong this time? After the campaign in Poland, Hitler wanted to attack France as soon as possible. This also meant that proper ammunition stockpiles were ready. Additionally, it was assumed that the campaign would not take a few weeks as it historically did. Based on the figures that Hitler had cribbed from the standard history of the Great War, it gave priority above all to howitzers and heavy mortars, the decisive weapons of trench warfare. Relative to actual production in autumn 1939 measured in terms of weight or shot, the Führerforderung implied a 3.5 fold increase in the next 12 months and 5 fold increase by autumn 1941. The issue is, we are talking about major systems and complexities here, as such, Everything would take months to have an effect. Although Hitler set clear priorities in this regard between September 1939 and January 1940, German ammunition production did stagnate. This was of course related to a certain degree with the rapid armament and expansion of German forces prior to the Second World War. Conscription had also an effect on the armaments industry as well. In the end it worked out. Kinda. In only 7 months between January and July 1940, German armaments production doubled. This was to be the most sustained and most dramatic increase in armaments production in the entire war. It was an increase made possible only by the ruthless mobilization of resources without regard either for the needs of civilian production or the future prospects of the war economy. So as you can see, learning from history might be a bit trickier than it seems. To summarize, there are indicators that the Russian forces currently face an ammunition crisis in Ukraine. This is hardly surprising since this is something that happens regularly. If a conflict reaches dimensions that were not anticipated, particularly are the First World War, but also the NATO intervention in Libya in 2011. Reasons for this could be that the Russian leadership did not anticipate a sustained conflict or they expected a different kind of conflict. In the first case, they likely did not allocate enough ammunition in general. In the second case, likely not enough ammunition of a certain kind. For instance, precision guided munitions. Assuming that the assumption is correct that the Russian Federation has a limited number of precision guided munitions, there are the following important questions to ask. Is the stockpile of regular ammunition also a concern? Is Russia able to ramp up production of precision guided munitions assuming that this is even intended and or possible, particularly considering the various embargoes especially in the high tech sector? Lately there have been reports that the Russian company Ural Wagon Zavod which produces the T-90 tank and other vehicles has problems due to current embargoes. Well, I hope you learned something new. Thank you to Andrew for reviewing the first draft and later final version of the script and providing valuable feedback on restructuring and additional information. Thank you to Chris for Military Aviation History for providing valuable information for this video. Thank you to all my supporters and Patreon and Subscribestar. As always, sources are listed in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.